Guys, we are live here on Tuesday with Scott Evans, branch manager at Cross Country Mortgage here in San Diego. Uh, the point of this live is to get an overview of the macro of the, the lending market right now as a whole, but then also dive into some of the more micro, some of the changes we've been seeing. Um, and I brought Scott onto the show. He's, you know, he's a personal friend, but he's also, I mean, he's not just a personal friend. He's the number one lender in San Diego, right? I mean, I don't I know all of the accolades. I'm pretty sure you're number one VA in the country, uh, number one or top five or something like that here in San Diego. Um, if you don't know him, this is Scott Evans, branch manager at Cross Country Mortgage. And uh, he works with all the biggest producers. So I just wanted to bring on the best to start a, this interview off the right way. Scott, welcome in. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. What's a day in the life of Scott Evans like right now, man? Are you going to the office? It looks like a, a home set up in the background. I, I dressed up for today, but no, I've been, I just work from home every, yeah. every day. I uh, have all my employees working from home. So we've been doing this for a while. Okay. So everybody's working from home. So do you do these? I mean, I've seen you do a couple of these Zoom calls here. Like, what's that like? You just taking client calls all the time from home or what? Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been working long hours. Uh, so the, the mortgage business industry has, has increased my, uh, probably by 400%, believe wow. it or not. So it's, I've had some uh, late nights, so like four o'clock in the morning working, just trying to, I want to get back to everyone. So would you say, some, some long days. yeah, I mean, it sounds like it 400% because as a real estate agent, one of the things we've noticed quarter one was fantastic in the sense of, you know, continuing on from last year's upward trend, but then mid March, you know, the shelter in place happens and we start to get all these things coming down the pipe. And so now April into May, we still have some listings, but the, the traffic has really kind of slowed up for us here on the real estate side, just because I mean, not necessarily, obviously we're essential employees. We can go out and show property, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the confidence is there for people to go out and look at properties and stuff like that. So you're saying it's a little bit different on the lending side. Yeah, there's rates came down and they're, they are currently still at the lowest they've ever been in history. Wow. So a lot of my past clients and just clients in general that have been reaching out, we've been able to refinance them fairly easy. So with the, with the different guidelines that are in place. So that's actually a good question. I was going to do it a little bit later, but I want to talk to you about that. Maybe let's do that first. Talk to me about the refinance market right now. What are rates? If I have, you know, I'm going to send this out to my clients afterwards, about a thousand clients or so. If they're sitting at home with a 5% rate on their mortgage, should they call you? Absolutely. So there's uh, four main types of loans, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That's conventional financing. Right now we've been getting clients that, 3%, 3.125, three and a quarter for a 30 year fix for those clients. Um, very small amount of closing costs around like three grand in closing costs, which we can just roll into the loan. Uh, we've been getting appraisal waivers where we literally just don't have to have an appraisal. So wow. it's even easier for the client. Um, and it's limited doc documentation closed less than 30 days. Okay. Uh, that's uh, one type of refinance. For those that have an FHA or VA loan, we've been getting rates at 2.75 for a 30 year fix. Wow. So we've been refinancing. I am the number one VA lender in the, in the United States the past two years. So we have a tremendous amount of VA clients and we've been re, refinancing and lowering their rates at 2.75%. So if someone's at, so to get to 2.75%, if they're at three and a half or three and a quarter, what's about the rule? Is it, if, if you can save half a percent, it's worth it. So the rule for VA uh, is there's four rules is one, you have to lower the interest rate by half a point okay. more Two, it's got to be a benefit for the client. Uh, there's a worksheet that we have to follow and has to be a net tangible benefit. There's going to be 211 days have passed since their first mortgage payment, which worked out to be about six to seven months. Um, and then they can't be delinquent on their loan. And then if they meet those guidelines, we can redo their loan, uh, redo the, the rate. And right now, I mean, 2.75, 30 year fix, sure. even for our purchases. And that's one of the biggest things uh, when you look at our competitors, um, like Navy Fed, go online right now, they're offering, it's a 3% 30 year fix, but they're charging three points mm -hmm. where we're at 2.75. So that's one of the biggest competitive advantages is our rates. We're so much lower than the competition. Yeah. So as, does that go for conventional as well? Yep. 
very we're su super super competitive and this is why um there's such a disparity in interest rates right now um usually there's about 10 trillion in loans outstanding in the united states about two trillion in loans go through the banking system in a given year within a 30-day time period in the month of march a four trillion worth of loans came flying through the doors wow and then everything shut down and everyone went had to work from home yeah so you couldn't staff or hire so there's a whole bunch of loans that came in and so the bigger banks like wells fargo or chase bank of america that are you know maybe fed they're a little more well known or people have their mortgages with them are now reaching out to them all at once so how do you stop the flow of loans you make yourself unattractive you make the interest and so that's up, why right? yeah they make the interest rates go up yep um, our company is staffed up and my team is staffed up so we are able to handle the volume and, and still be able to uh, provide great rates for our clients Right so that, that's a good a good point. And it leads me in because I've been seeing news stories all over about uh, Wells Fargo stopping their jumbo loans or Chase restricting or making it much, much tougher to get a mortgage. Here in San Diego, jumbo loans make up a bigger percentage, I'd say, than you know Nebraska or somewhere in the middle of the country because of our price point. So what does that mean for my first time home buyers or my you know move up buyers right now? All those things, is it tougher now to get a mortgage than it was yesterday or, or last month? The only, it's not tougher. The only things that have changed is the jumbo arena has become uh, more strict at the moment and, and they've kind of pulled back of, as far as options. Um, and it's partly because the two, two players in the jumbo world are Wells and Chase and they're overloaded. Mm -hmm. So right now they're like, look, we can't take any more. We can't hire anyone, more people. So they're like, well, they're pushing the loans back. Um, and on the jumbo world where that's, those are not really options. So what we have done, we pivoted and we have a great first, like two loan options where we can be able to do two loans for the client, um, you know, with the minimum, like 10% down. So someone's buying a million dollar home, we could do, you know, 700,000 first and a, um, you know, $200,000 second. So we do two, two loans to get up to $900,000 putting, sure you know, the 10% down of a hundred thousand. Sure. So it's still possible. Like the, it's not necessarily that the sky is falling, but they have tightened up a lot of the restrictions around, um, around what they're buying in the jumbo market. Yeah. Cause I was actually on a call uh, for some agents in San Jose this morning and I was providing options, $1.4 million purchase, 10% down rate was uh, like 3.65 for a 30 year fix for the first. And, 3.99 on the second. So it's still, the rates are still extremely attractive. Right. And that person was putting 10% down on a $1.4 million home. Yeah. So, so there are options. There we are just, options. we just have to pivot um, of, of what we're, what we're doing. Okay. Um, talk to me a little bit about FHA and VA. Cause I'm also seeing, and this could just be the Facebook F, you know, uh, ethos out there that I'm just seeing stories that come by that aren't true or not. But did did FHA and VA also have changes to them? I saw that maybe the the minimum requirements for for credit scores on FHA went up. So that's all a myth. Okay. In fact, I emailed you. I showed you pricing. I priced out loans with a client with a 500 FICO score for a VA loan, and we have rates at where we can get 2.75. Um, they would have to pay two points. But remember, Navy Fed was paying three points to get 3%. Sure. This was with someone with a 500 credit score. So what happened is we are um, a medium, a medium size uh, direct lender. So what that means is there's no middleman. So it's us, and then we go to Fannie, Freddie, FHA, VA. Okay. Um, so we can service our own loans. So what happened is the people don't, don't have that ability to go directly to Fannie, Freddie, the uh, FHA and VA, they're going to a middleman and they're, those banks are already filled up and they don't want to take um, high loan to value loans. When I say high loan to value, it's like an FHA loan, they're putting that much money Correct. down, a VA yeah. loan. They don't want to take a high loan to value loan uh, with poor credit score, specifically with the forbearance and different things going on. And I'll talk about that in a, uh, um, later on about the yep. forbearance. Yep. But that's why they created some of those minimum those credit score requirements but look we only want to take this 
you know, book a business. So they put in restrictions. FHA and VA did not put any of those restrictions. Ah, okay. So it's, it's just like some the overlay. It's the overlay at the, the bank. overlay. Ah, got it. Yeah. That makes total sense. So, and that kind of ties into the, the difference of working with a direct lender or walking into your Wells Fargo branch is that Wells Fargo is going to have some overlays right now because they're so overloaded and worried about the forbearances mm-hmm. and things that they're dealing with there that they don't want to take on the new clients at the higher risk of the higher LTV, but the direct lenders can still do that. Yes. Got it. That makes and a lot so of sense. So we business as usual. Because what happened, we, this, all that's happened is we went back to 2008. And in 2008, all the loans that were really being done were going to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA. The difference is VA has no lo- loan limit whatsoever. Okay. You know, there's no cap right. on the loan limit. And that's new. That's FHA, new for 20, 2020. 2020. Yep. Um, and then Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and FHA in San Diego County is Seminole um uh 701 500 for the loan limit mm-hmm. whereas back in 2008 it was like 300,000 right i mean you you could buy a pretty big home for with a 700,000 dollar yep um loan yep yeah so the so i want to kind of talk about the forbearance yeah that was my next and, question and it it's because it's like the buzzword right now um i've got some clients that have asked me and obviously that it's the lending space but forbearance versus deferment what are the definitions of both of those? And if I have a client right now who is uncertain about their job situation, should they be calling their bank and asking for a forbearance or a deferment or yeah. neither? Yeah. So there's a lot of, on the CFPB, the Consumer Protection uh, Financial Protection Bureau, mm-hmm. um, that's the government body that regulates the mortgage industry. There's a lot of great information on um, um, on that website, mm-hmm. but I sent out an email last week and okay. I did this because I had a client asking me um, about some options that were provided to her from the mortgage company, from the service provider. Right. She went through the process. So one of the biggest things is all the servicing companies, the, the people that make you make your mortgage payment to, they're extremely backed up. They're not used to all these phone calls coming right. in for people trying to do the forbearance. So it just expect that when you call, there's usually a website you have to go to. So once you go on the website, they'll, you'll fill, it, fill in uh, paperwork and documentation, and then it'll probably take them you know, 10 days or so to get back to you to give the forbearance. But what happens is this is why I sent this email out, is people weren't understanding um, the options. So there are three options for the forbearance, but all the companies are really only providing the first two. The first one is, they, let's say they give you a forbearance or deferment for three months, yep. right? Well, after those three months are done, then you have to make all the payments for the three months that you miss plus the next month. So you essentially, you'd have to write a check for four months right. of, of your payment. That defeats the purpose. That's option one. Yeah. That defeats the purpose. Right. So it, it, it's very disappointing um, how this is all playing out, but... Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the first thing. And then people are going to be blindsided thinking that you know, they're not going to be prepared. So then they have an option to either do a loan modification um, or they have a mortgage late. And then you know, things might rack up where they could be in a, in a situation. Sure. Uh, the other option, and this is why I researched it, was the second option that people were provided is they would ha- have to pay back the deferment or the payments that they missed over a period of time. And the problem is, is wasn't giving how that, what that period of time is. Is it, you know, a few months, is it a year, is it right. two years, or three yeah. years? So it's very ambiguous. So they're like having to choose one or two options where they don't even know what the options. Obviously, um, if someone is doing the forbearance, it's because they have some financial, you know, the, the income mm-hmm. coming in, mm-hmm. I would do the payback over a period of time and instead of one lump sum, because it just doesn't make sense to do. Is there any, uh, is there the any third con? Op- oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a third option. There, there is that. a third option that they promote on the, um, that no one is offering. Um, but that at least I've seen, um, cause I've asked a lot of questions and that was tacking the payments on at the very right. end. Yes. And so that's the, the forbearance aspect is what kind of caused why some of the lenders have increased their, their credit score requirements on loans that they were on the FHA and VA loans, because now you have a high loan to value loan that if they go into forbearance and then now they, you're not making the payments and then they rack up, right. well, what if something happens and now 
there's not much equity and the bank has to take over that property. So they kind of wanted to get a little higher credit score requirement. Sure. Clients. Is there a so, con to a, to a buyer uh, or to, I'm sorry, to a homeowner doing a forbearance other than ultimately having to pay it back at the end, whether that be at the end of the three months or over the time or at the end, like, is, it, is there a, a net negative to their credit or, or something like that? There's no negative to the credit. Okay. Um, they they're not penalized for going into forbearance. Mm -hmm. There's there's no derogatory um, credit that will affect them going into it. Um, I really think that if people are having some type of hardship, they should go into the like do the forbearance, um, and at least maybe choose the option of paying it over a period of time instead of obviously paying the, the mm -hmm. lump sum. I mm -hmm. mean, if they have the savings, maybe pay it for the lump sum. But um, I would do that to allow them to give more breathing room and that way they're not necessarily stressed during adding more stress during this time if they're right. someone's out of work or they have less income so that way they can have essentially more income for you know or more cash flow yeah um so okay. i would definitely encourage them to do it good okay i'm gonna clip this out because that's been a hot question i feel like both on social media and even in my inbox and i'm gonna get clip this out into its own video i'm gonna send that out for barons first deferment obviously try to shoot for having it either tacked on at the back end or paying it out over time not just a one lump sum payment at the end of the three months that really defeats the purpose so well the the tacking tacking put it at the end they're not offering oh that's what you're that's saying the they're, they're, they they say they're offering but then they don't really give you that option they're right? not yeah. yeah, no one is there. None of them. Uh, no one's offering because the um, the servicing portfolio valuations and everything, the way the banks are working is sure. they don't want to have it pushed back. You know, these things haven't been paid on. They want to get yep. things back current. Sure. So, OK, good to know. That's really yeah, good to know, because you awful. hear a lot of conflicting stories, especially on social media and things like that. So um, so I think yeah. you, you, you answered the question about the refinancing. What is the market like? And I think we tapped on it a little bit, but what is the market like right now? Like what are rates today for just an average, uh, you know, 30 year fixed refinance? 2.75 for VA and FHA or for the purchase. Okay. Um, and then we're doing, we're taking loans over from other people. I took one over. Uh, an 875,000 purchase, you know, hundred percent financing 2.75 yeah. um, rate. I mean, one, a $2 million purchase, hundred percent financing for a VA loan, 2.75. So that is our biggest competitive advantage from just, we don't have the restrictions on the credit scores. Uh, we have no, like no restrictions, our speed, you know, 24 hour underwrites, but like anyone that's experiencing where they have credit score requirements or restrictions that their lender are putting on their clients that we do not have that. And our rates are super, super aggressive and we're very, very quick um, on our turn times. Good. And then that's conventional we're in the low threes, like yeah. for 30 year fix. That, that's what I was looking for there. Cause it's, it's super helpful for me to be able to convey a hey, rates are still historically extremely, extremely low. Um, you know, there are some of the bigger banks putting overlays on that are making it a little bit tougher, but obviously I have these direct lender relationships, uh, who can still lend at pre COVID, uh, type restriction or, you know, type, type guidelines. Um, and so, the, and then there is help out there for forbearance and, and you gave a little bit of the information on what they, what they should be looking into. What else, if anything, should any of my buyers or anybody watching this know uh, about the lending environment right now? Maybe something that's different, but from before or something that they should keep at the top of mind. Um, and really, you know, it, I mean, it's business, there's a lot of despair. There is a lot of disparity, uh, between lenders right now. And it's really because of the volume. Some lenders were not equipped for the volume that was coming in. That's why you are going to see a, a definitely a variance between interest rates and, um, guidelines. So don't take, just like you brought up, you know, about credit score requirements with FHA and VA, yeah. a lot of people are saying things that are not accurate. So there's, this is the first time really in my career that there's been so much um, disparity, like between guidelines, between it, different um, banks. And then people are spreading rumors or like say, saying information and then taking that as the fact and then, you know, informing people of the wrong information. Well, that's really good. Like, really, as far as like credit, no, hundred percent. Like credit score requirements and and stuff like that, which is not accurate. 
No, it sounds like people and banks are, are throttling their business because they're overworked or they're over, you know, they're over, uh, over inundated with, with, uh, with clients coming in. So they have to artificially bump the rate up or they have to overlay guidelines that aren't the overall guidelines. I think that's, that's super helpful. I'm really appreciative that you came on, kind of explain this both to, uh, you know, me, but then also to everybody watching. I'm going to send this out to my, my client bases. Um, I'm going to drop all of your contact information in below this, obviously, mm -hmm. so they can contact you here in San Diego, but not just San Diego. You work all of California, right? All 50, all 50 states. You work all 50 states. I, I, yeah, we're doing loans all over Virginia. I mean, Hawaii, you name it. Yeah. So we can do, we can do loans anywhere. Okay, perfect. Good to know. Um, Scott, thank you so much for coming on, man. Thank I you. appreciate it. I'm gonna let you get back to your, to your home office there. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Later, bro. Bye.